Timex, a brand name deeply rooted in American history, an iconic name that has graced the wrist of generations of men and women, and I believe we can confidently say will continue to do so going forward. And there have been countless models and designs from military-inspired watches, field watches, and dress watches, most analog, some digital, and all having utilized mechanical hand wine, automatic, solar, or quartz-powered movements. And who can forget the forever memorable catchphrase from the 1950s and 60s, it takes a lickin' and keeps on ticking. Could do, could take such a licking and keep on ticking like no other watch built. While the phrase isn't used any longer, last seeing a brief revival in the 1990s, when someone brings up a Timex watch or brand, you will most often hear someone blurt out the phrase, some 60 plus years later. Now I say that's a damn good campaign slogan. Today, we're taking a look at a very specific model from Timex, which was reissued back in 2017, the Timex Marlin, originally modeled after the mid-century 1960s version with its classic Art Deco numerals at each even number marker. There are also reissued versions like this Marlin in a yellow gold tone case that mimics the look of the Marlin designs of the late 1970s more modern and clean with simple stick indices at each hour. And it begs the question, is the Timex Marlin still relevant in 2023? So let's compare these two watches, the Timex Marlin model TW2R47900ZV, we'll call it the Art Deco Marlin, priced at around $175, and the newer released Marlin model TW2T34600, we'll call it the Goldie, priced at around $225. Let's start with the case and strap dimensions, with the Art Deco ringing true to the original model coming in at a case width of 34mm, lug to lug height of 41mm, lug width of 18mm, and case thickness with the domed crystal of 10.2mm. The Goldie is a bit more modernized for the men of today, coming in with a case diameter of 40mm, lug to lug height of 47.5mm, lug width of 20mm, and case thickness of 13.2mm, also with that dome crystal. Both watches feature only 30 meters of water resistance, which is to be expected as a dressier piece, and while they are wearable as a daily wristwatch for non-sporting or water activities, there will be a risk of damage due to both watches featuring domed acrylic crystals. Depending on where you stand with acrylic crystal, you may see this as a positive or as a negative. I like the vintage aesthetic and don't mind acrylic. Plus, if you do happen to get a light scuff or scratch, some poly watch will wipe away your tears as easily as it wipes away those scuffs. The case of the Art Deco is solid stainless steel, a welcome upgrade from some of the vintage versions and even more affordable modern Timex models that utilize a base metal plated case and often feature a steel case back only. From the side, we see a split beveled edge giving nice rounded slopes where the upper and lower halves of the case meet. We also see that box domed acrylic crystal sitting atop like a dewdrop. The straight edge drilled lugs curve downward just slightly and are a nice vintage touch. I like how the delicate unsigned crown hides into the case for a sleeker profile. Finished in all high polish, the watch has a no-nonsense approach to it that I find really charming. The Goldie is a plated stainless steel case, but if you're worried about the plating being an issue long term, there are steel case options available in this automatic version lineup. I personally think the silver case option is very timeless, but I like the more formal look that the Goldie has to it, whether in this silver dial version or even the black dial and gold case variant. Almost identical to the Art Deco, the case shape design is the same, but we lose the drilled lug holes. And I have to admit, I was a bit bummed to see this version did not have the drilled lugs. I like that vintage touch that they give to the watch. Now, I wanted to see the quality of this mesh bracelet as well, and I have to say, it's built a bit better than I had assumed it would be. It's smooth to the touch, easy to adjust, both on the clasp end and with the quick release spring bars. But I'm sad to report that unfortunately both watch straps leave a bit to be desired. The faux alligator print and high gloss of the Art Deco is executed a bit weak, giving a more plastic look and feel to it, rather than that of a luxurious exotic leather strap. The Goldie Mesh gives me concerns with possible long-term rubbing off of the plating, which may be a major concern, and I dislike the straight bar end links and would have preferred curved fitted end links to match up with the case. It comes off as looking like more of an afterthought than a cohesive design element. Lucky for us though, these quote-unquote issues 
are remedied with a quick strap upgrade. Both have the potential for a wide variety of strap colors, materials, and textures. But since I don't own many 18mm straps at all, I'm afraid we're limited to our imagination for the Art Deco model. The Goldie is a bit loud, I would say, on the gold mesh, which is great for some, but I found for my taste that when toning it down on a strap, the watch has just the right bit of flash and balance with rich dark colors or even lighter earth-toned options. Here's a few of my favorites. Okay, let's talk design. The Art Deco, simple and clean, with its shimmering sunburst champagne dial color and texture, radiating light, it's contrasted so perfectly with its dark enamel black sword-shaped hands with thin needle seconds hand, and upon closer inspection, the dial actually looks like it's convex, curving down towards the edge of the case. I think it would have been nice to see the Art Deco numerals also in black, but by choosing the steel finishing, there's a bit of depth given to the dial, and perhaps it would have looked too flat with just black painted hour markers. I think choosing a matte finish strap for this watch allows for that sunburst dial to take center stage. I feel that with the faux lizard strap in high gloss, there's a bit of competition from these features. The watch is light and comfortable, but for my wrist size, I would have liked to see it come on a 20mm strap. I could get used to the smaller case size, but a wider strap would give more of a wrist presence on my 7 and one quarter inch wrist. And the watch has a solid case back, which is a press-on case back. I think it would have been cool to see an exhibition case back with the manual wind movement, but that is only because the other watch has that feature as you'll see here in a minute. Now, design of the Goldie is a bit hit and miss for me. I like the sunburst silver dial color. I think it leans towards plenty of strap colors available and can play well in any season of the year. The Timex branding and automatic indication is small and unobtrusive. It's unpretentious, which I can appreciate. The hour markers are simple stick indices that are applied in gold tone and the black printed minute markers are easy to see. And while there is loom on the hands, it's somewhat useless as there's no loom on the hour markers and the loom fades extremely quickly. The date window is small and unfinished, and I think if the date window was just a tad larger, it would look a bit more balanced. And lastly, the biggest issue I have is that the handset is too small for this dial. The minute and seconds hand do not reach out to the minute markers, so it makes the watch look disproportionate. Moving to the back, we see there is a screw down case back that has an exhibition case showing the movement, which as you can see is the common Miyota 8215 caliber, a three hertz movement with 21 joules, 40 hour power reserve, and this particular watch has an impressive accuracy of around zero to minus three seconds per day. The Art Deco from what I can find through a brief online search seems to be determined as a deconstructed Siegel ST6 movement, converting it from automatic to hand wind only. And I know some will poo-poo on the use of a Siegel movement, but my experience with many of their various movements has been more positive than negative. This particular hand wind movement has 17 joules, is also beating at 3 hertz, and when fully wound will give you between 30 to 36 hours of power reserve. The accuracy fluctuates as the mainspring is winding down, but when fully wound, it too has a rather impressive accuracy of around 0 to plus 3 seconds per day. If you've personally experienced any issues with the 34mm Handwind Marlin reissue, please be so kind as to share it with us in the comments. So what do you think? Is the Timex Marlin still relevant in 2023? Is the Art Deco the superior model, ringing more true to the original design? Or is the Goldie reimagination and modernized update the better model, despite its shortcomings that I've pointed out? Share with me what your thoughts are, and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and consider subscribing to see more like this in the future. And if you stuck with me this far, I wanted to let you know you rock, and y'all are the reason I put so much effort into these videos for you to enjoy. Thank you for that. And until next time, as always, may the Schwartz be with you. Take care.